But hello and welcome back to the channel, but just in case you're new here, my name is Mike and this is going to be my annual horror room tour for 2023. So if you can do me a favor, if you're new to the channel or maybe you haven't subscribed, if you want to join this community and you love horror content just like this, please consider subscribing or at the very least, if you see something very cool in my collection, something that you like, something that you connect with, drop me a comment down below and let's get some conversation flowing. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's really all about. So without further ado, let's slice right into it. All right, hey, welcome everybody to my horror room tour for 2023. And right out the gate, you can already see that my horror room has went through a massive change. I didn't like the regular looking panel door and I'm like, you know what, I gotta let people know exactly what they're walking into. So I got this awesome Gremlins door cover and I put it on so when you open the door, this stripe and the rest of the Gremlins are going to welcome you into my horror room because that's how it should be. Alright, as we open the door here, I got a full size Critters 3 theatrical poster. One of my favorite franchises of all time is the Critters, and I really like that poster. Got that for Christmas a long, long time ago. And of course, above them, I know everyone always gives me compliments on these. These old school full moon line of Puppet Master figures. Uh, brand new in the box. These suckers are super old. And of course, I don't have all of them. I do happen to have my favorites, Pinhead, Tunnler, Six Shooter. Um, and I even got some exclusive versions like the Gold Edition of Torch or the exclusive Manifesto or the exclusive Totem with the different coloring and the cape. Um, I am missing a few of the Retro Puppet Masters. I'm missing Blade in package. I'm missing Jester. So I don't got the whole set yet. But I'm slowly getting them as we're going along, and I'm just so happy to have them in my collection because I really do love Puppet Master, and I really do love this Halloween-style pinhead with the shrunken head and the bloody little trick-or-treat bag. So cool. I love these figures so much. And, of course, I got the golden-style six-shooter as well. But coming around the corner from the Puppet Master figures, I have this really cool Friday the 13th uh, Spirit Halloween wooden sign. I really like this. It shows all the Jason masks throughout the films. And I had this thing for like almost two weeks before I realized that the Jasons are actually not in order. And then I liked it slightly less. But for 15 bucks or whatever it was, it's a really cool piece and I'm glad to have it. Right next to that is... Arguably one of my most popular things in my horror room, one of the things I get endless compliments on and I am super, super proud of. Inside her case, this is the one-to-one -one scale Trick or Treat Studios replica of Annabelle the doll. And then I had the warning, the positively do not open sticker added. I got her concealed in her case, in her chair. She does light up. It's surrounded with lights. If you want to see what that looks like, there is a short right here on the channel. It's only, you know, 10, 15 seconds of your life, but you get to see it all lit up. And one thing that my wife and I did that I've never seen anyone else do, and why I'm so proud of this, is we had gotten fake Bible verses, and we plastered them all along the walls surrounding Annabelle. We had gotten the inspiration from Annabelle Creation. Um, still, in my opinion, the best Annabelle movie, the prequel. So that's where we got this from when she's in the Higgins closet and it's covered in the Bible verses to try to contain her. So we decided we'd go for that look as well and I'm super, super proud of it. It's where the closet used to be, but I took the door off to now make it Annabelle's little home, her little space where she's concealed in. And uh, right next to that, we have this really cool uh, foam Jason mask that my oldest daughter had made for me for my birthday one year. Or maybe a Father's Day, I'm, I, I can't quite remember. Uh, below that, it's just Friday the 13th, the game poster that came with the game when I pre-ordered it. Right here is another thing my oldest daughter had made me. Um, I believe she made this at school and in 2021. My, my daughter's name obviously is Miley. She has a heart on there. She put King of Horror on it. And uh, she put a crown on top, if y'all can see that, with some of the slashers on there. So that was a really cool one. Anytime my kids make me something, you know, I'm a proud dad. I'm always going to display it. So those are for my kiddos right there. And this whole wall, or most of this wall, is a lot of the celebrities and horror icons that I've gotten to meet over the years. Such as Shawnee Smith from the Saw franchise. Of course, Amanda Young. 
I had got to meet her with my family. That was a little fucking blast. I got to meet Jonathan Breck, the Creeper, from Jeepers Creepers 1, 2, and 3. I got to meet uh, Peter Cowper, the original miner from My Bloody Valentine, one of the best slasher movies ever, probably underrated. Got to meet him. That was a lot of fun. Right here, this was a gift from my brother. This is a Haddonfield Tribune uh, take on the Halloween Massacre, of course, from the original 1978 Halloween. This is like what the newspaper clipping may have looked like the, the day after. So there's that. I also got to meet Christina Lee, Kyle from Child's Play 2, Cult of Chucky, and of course the television series. I always display my picture with them, with the autograph. It's just kind of how I like to do it. Now, this was another gift from a friend of mine, and he had actually sent me another take on the Haddonfield Tribune. It's the same concept, just a little bit of a different take. I like having them side by side because they look kind of cool together, and I like seeing the differences between the two. Also got to meet Alex Vincent, of course, Andy Barkley from the Child's Play franchise. Again, really cool person. You know, everybody I've met has been cool, you know, so that kind of goes without saying. And right next to that, I got this really, really cool art print. This was done by Chris Oz Fulton. You can find his work on eBay, and he makes these amazing paintings that I got this for like $20 or $25. Like, it was such a good deal. I am a diehard Leprechaun fan, like diehard, diehard, tattooed on my leg. I love the Leprechaun. And below that, of course, you all know my love for Hannibal, the TV series. It's what I named this channel after. I got this signed by Catherine Isabel. I ran out of money, so I couldn't get a picture with her, unfortunately. But I did meet her. She was super sweet, and she signed this for me. And she was really, really excited when I brought um, this to her because most of the people were coming to her because of, you know, Ginger Snaps or Freddy vs. Jason. But all I wanted to talk about was Hannibal. So that was super, super cool. And then up from there, we have... The NECA Puppet Master Ultimate Tunnler and Pinhead. Love these fucking figures so much. Um, I still have them in the trunk here because I wasn't really sure how to display them because they're so small. So I just pinned them on the wall for now until I can kind of figure out what to do with them. But that's where they're at for now. Right below there, got to meet Ken Kerzinger, one of my favorite Jasons. I actually met him twice. This is the second time I actually met him, believe it or not. I met him, that's the second time. And then right above that, I have this awesome autographed 8x10 from Warwick Davis, the Leprechaun. Um, this I had to order from him. The Signature Shop is his website. Um, I feared that I would never get the chance to meet him, even though it's a bucket list thing for me. But I'm happy to announce, as of recording this, on December 28th, I think I'm recording this, um, I am going to meet him this March at Days of the Dead. So I am over the moon excited, bucket list accomplished. Below that, I have this real fiberglass Jason mask, um, Freddy vs. Jason style, that I asked Ken Kerzinger to autograph for me when I met him. Again, this is the real deal. This is made of fiberglass. It's the real, real shit. It's not that fake, cheap, plastic Halloween bullshit. This is the real deal. Below that, I got this awesome, this is my design sign that my wife had made for me for my birthday or for a Christmas. I don't remember when I get these things, y'all. I just know that I get them, and I know that I appreciate the fuck out of it. And just below that, we have this old school NECA Freddy vs. Jason glove and mask diorama set, that, or box set, excuse me, um, shadow box set. This thing is so cool, and it's so rare, and I got this for Christmas when I was like, a kid, maybe like a young teenager, I don't remember, but I got this from my parents as a gift and I lost my shit. It's numbered on the bottom and I'm so, so glad to have this as a part of my collection. And then up from there, we have the Ultimate Blade and Torch. Again, I am a big Puppet Master fan, so I'm going to get all of them that NECA makes. And um, I know they had just announced Six Shooter and Jester 2-Pack, so I will be picking that up. The first time I see it in the store, it's going to be in my hands and in my house. Now, this is the first time I met Ken Kerzinger. This was actually back-to-back. -back. I met him this year, and I went to see him again the ne very next year. This is the first time I met him, got a picture with him, and that's when he um, had signed... Sorry about the glare, y'all. That's when he had signed the Jason mask for me. <clears throat> and remember, we were just talking about Chris Oz Fulton. This is another one of his uh, painting prints of Pumpkinhead. Super 
underrated monster movie that needs more love. And quite honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of remakes, but this, this, if done right, could be a killer remake nowadays in 2023. Well, 2024. Love Pumpkinhead. Big, big Pumpkinhead fan. Right here we have an Elm Street sign. This is the real deal. This is made of like um, some sort of steel. Um, it's not, again, a plastic boy. This is real shit. I love that one. And just below that, I actually have these two pictures right here. This was um, a handful of years ago, I believe 2014. Um, it was my mom's treat. That's my mom right there. Hi, mom. Um, she had took me, her treat, again, she surprised me and took me to go meet Robert England in the Freddy makeup. And that was such a blast and a memory that I have with my mom that'll live on forever. It'll outlive me, it'll outlive this channel, and it'll live on forever. So shout out to my mom right there. Um, and that was our weekend pass, or my weekend pass, I kept mine. And then speaking of my mom, she had surprised me with this when I was a kid. Uh, hey, Pumpkin Folk. Pumpkin Folk is my nickname, I got it when I was young. And this is a Robert England photo that she got me for in 2013. She surprised me when she bought his um, autobiography. It came with this, so that was really cool. Right above there, it's kind of hard to see because he wrote it in gold. I met Zach Galligan, of course, Billy Peltzer from Gremlins. I got to meet him at a con. He was really cool. And just below that, I got a really, really, really nice friend of mine that I haven't heard from a while. But he got me this really cool Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare 3D comic book. And I wanted to display that because I love Freddy. And I, anytime someone sends me something, it just warms my heart. And their generosity never goes unnoticed. So I'm always going to put it on display. Just like this down here. This is a Nightmare on Elm Street um, notebook or like a journal. This was given to me by a friend out of her personal collection so again i'm going to take care of it and i'm going to put it on display in my horror room and then coming across the wall here i have all my neca friday the 13th ultimate jasons well of course this is the part three like um out of the water zombie pamela uh pamela <laughs> pamela retro cloth and then of course i have all of the neca ultimate jasons Except the NES Jason. I don't have him yet, but I have all the other ones. I'm up to date. They kind of go across the uh, shelf here. Got all of them lined up. And NECA, if you're watching this, I would really like a part 8 and a part 9 in between these two. I'm just putting it out there. And then we come down here. I have this giant sized my bloody valentine poster print that i had gotten with the shout factory exclusive when i got the figure and the limited edition steel book i got this with it and right next to that i have this curse of chucky family video poster which this is going to practically be a fossil hell there might be people watching this that don't even know what this is but family video was a video store when i was growing up i mean i'm more nostalgic for blockbuster but family video is cool too um it was as simple as i walked in there i said what are you guys gonna do with that they said throw it away and i said i'll take it and they tore it off the wall and they gave it to me so now not video stores are no longer a thing it's even more special to me next to that i got the godzilla versus kong of course this was a little poster they were given out at the premiere so i snatched one and right next to that is my light that i have to move is the two In Search of Darkness documentaries, part one and part two. There is a part three, and they're doing a 90s doc and like a sci-fi doc as well. They keep pumping these out. These are the best horror documentaries ever made, in my opinion, right now. At least not franchise-specific, because Never Sleep Again and uh, Crystal Lake Memories or Camp Crystal Lake Memories, those are phenomenal as well. But not non-franchise-specific, those are... those. <laughs> Those are killer. And just next to them, I have my Billy 1 to 1 scale replica doll from Sideshow. And of course, he's on his little tricycle. Um, I really love this. Um, I really love this Billy. I love this prop. He's super rare now and hard to find. Um, Trick or Treat Studios has a new one coming out, a deluxe one, that quite honestly is better than this one. It's more accurate. The shoes on this one are not accurate. The hair is not screen accurate. But nonetheless, I'm proud to have a Billy, and I do love it. And right above Billy, I have my life-size Freddy Krueger. I've had this for a very long time. Um, probably 
one of my first pieces I ever had. And this thing's really cool. It's just a mannequin, of course, dressed as Freddy. And then his glove was made out of real, like, um, real copper sheets. And these blades are real. I actually accidentally stabbed myself in the side um, on accident when I first got it. And I was bleeding and shit. It was a whole ordeal. Um, this is a really cool figure of, um, not a figure, really cool um, life size here. But as you can see, you know, nothing lasts forever. And the latex is starting to harden and discolor on his face because he's really showing his age. You know, especially underneath his hat looks a little more fresh, but his face is starting to harden and starting to age. So I'm doing the best I can to take care of the latex, but, you know, nothing lasts forever. Of course, um, if you can see this, this is a Freddy vs. Jason style Freddy. Yeah, he's getting a little he's getting a little hard, but he's hanging in there, and he's super old. I've had him for a long-ass time. And behind his head, I got a Walking Dead poster, and I got this cool, like, record that somebody made obviously Chucky's face out of I got that at a convention so that's pretty cool and then right here I got a pinhead from Puppet Master Mask that's super cool you gotta have pinhead pinhead's my favorite puppet right here is a leprechaun head bust like it's an, a leprechaun inspired piece because it really doesn't capture the likeness of Warwick Davis nor Lyndon Porco, so I like to call it an inspired leprechaun bust. It's clearly a leprechaun, but it doesn't really capture either of them, so it's somewhere in the middle, kind of just like an inspiration type piece, I would say. And right next to that is one of my first detoffs, and up here, I love Twisted Metal ever since I was a kid. My favorite character was always Sweet Tooth. Needles Kane, Marcus Kane, whatever lore you want to follow, Sweet Tooth, baby, right here. I got this Sweet Tooth truck, and then I got the Sweet Tooth Funko Pop. Fucking love that thing. I got the Ultimate Pennywise, Tim Curry. Come on, I wouldn't have it any other way. With a broken hand because he fell, and I uh, haven't super glued him yet. <laughs> and then right behind Mr. Curry is a Jack Attack resin statue that I had bought from Full Moon Features a while back. Because I love demonic toys and I love Jack Attack. He's my favorite demonic toy. So as soon as I saw that, I'm like, well, that's mine. So I also have Jack Attack right back there. Really cool resin statue, which I think is still available, by the way. If you guys are interested, go to, I think, fullmoonhorror.com. I think it is. And then just below them, I'm going to go ahead and open the detox so the glare isn't so bad. I have the Trick or Treat Studios 1 to 1. Tiffany doll from Seed of Chucky. Um, I have a whole review on on all three of these um, replica dolls on my channel. If you want to go back and get my in depth thoughts, obviously I love it. It's fucking amazing. I, I I just I fucking love it. There's not much more I could say about that. Right here I have three iconic slashers. I got Michael Myers. I got the Miner, and I got Ghostface. And, you know, I've, I've said before that these three figures kind of represent three friends in my life, like us as a group. Um, th these are their favorite slashers. And um, I've also got a little bit bullied about uh, Ghostface because I have this big horror room and I've been collecting my whole life and I didn't have any Ghostface in here. So there you go. Now I do. So people can stop yelling at me in the comments. <laughs> Down here I got a Wesley Snipes 1-6 scale figure back there um i know it's not exactly horror related but uh wesley wesley snipes's um depiction of blade is one of my favorite characters of all time so i had to have that also i am a massive fan of underworld so i have this soft vinyl statue of marcus one of the vampire elders from star ace Fucking amazing, amazing statue. Great detail. I don't think I did a full video on that. And then right here, um, a question I get asked a lot is, what was the first horror movie I ever seen? It was Trilogy of Terror. And I think it came out in 1971, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. It came out in the 70s, and this was it. It was Trilogy of Terror, the little Zuni warrior killer doll. And this thing is actually made... Um, it's it's molded from the only remaining sculpt of the or the only remaining mold of the um, original doll used in the movie. This was made by Hollywood Collectibles. It's long gone. You can't get it anymore. Maybe you can find some scalper somewhere that has it, but it's numbered on the bottom underneath the base, 
and uh, it's super cool to have. Like I said, the specs are exact to the original mold. And just below that, earlier um, I had mentioned I met Jonathan Breck. I also um, brought this mask along, and he was gracious enough to autograph it for me to Michael Jonathan Breck, the Creeper. So that's a Trick or Treat Studios Creeper mask. So that's what I got in my first Detoff right here. And atop my next Detoff here, I have this massive, massive 18-inch scale Ultimate Mezco King Kong. Because if you know me, you know that I love King Kong. And speaking of Kong, I have all four of NECA's Ultimate King Kongs so far up to date with all the ones they've released. This one is probably my favorite. He does come with an airplane. I just, unfortunately, it's in the repair shop right now because these guys took a tumble as well. So the airplane is in a couple pieces. So I'm going to super glue that and get that back in his hand. But I'm a big, big, big King Kong fan. So I got my little King Kong dedication shelf right here. And just below the King Kongs, I have the Trick or Treat Studios one-to-one -one replica of Glenn. Of course, Seed of Chucky. Love Glenn. I've always been a big Glenn fan. I know he gets a lot of shit, but you know what? I loved him, always have. And just below Glenn, we have a couple cool things here. Uh, big Conjuring fan. So I have the Crooked Man right here, ultimate NECA figure. And then I also have this awesome replica bell. This is from the movie Krampus. And my wife had got this for me. This is made by Dark Matter Props. I don't believe he makes these anymore, but you got to custom make it and put your name on it. And it's an exact screen accurate gift box and Krampus bell. I have a whole... Oh, don't mind my thumb. I had got a cryogenic burn at work, so don't mind that. Um, exact screen accurate bell and gift box. I have a whole video on my channel dedicated to that if you want to know more about that or a closer look. And then, of course, I have the NECA ultimate annabelle in her case with that little tarot card which is the one thing i don't have for my life-size annabelle setup i gotta look into that and down below here i got a letter that was given to me from full moon when i had purchased the replica of pinhead this is just kind of telling you you know that tom devlin was the one that had made the uh, puppet and the specs are exact to the um, screen used doll and all that stuff. So I kind of hung that up there because I do have a full-size prop replica of Pinhead from Puppet Master. I have the Trick or Treat Studios full-size scale Mr. Snuggles from the Book of Saw, Spiral. I love Spiral. I always defend that movie. So here it is. Got the COA for a Pinhead back there. And, you know, I love Trick or Treat Studios, so I have the Selfie Murder Edition 1-6 scale Art the Clown. And I don't even know if the Selfie Murder Edition is still available, but I'm glad that I have it. Because with the success of Terrifier 2, you know, Art is blowing up and he's becoming a horror icon very fast. So I think those sold out, so I'm really glad that I was able to get one before they were gone. But let's move along right over to this Detoff on the side of the broom. And here I have majority of my Funko Pops here in my collection. As you can see, I got two jumbo Funko Pops with Chucky and Gizmo. And then I got these little Funko Pops of Merle Dixon from The Walking Dead, Chatter from Hellraiser, Chucky and Tiffany, Negan and Daryl Dixon, all from The Walking Dead. So pretty much um, there's just certain characters I love so much that I'll buy anything of them is pretty much what it comes down to. I'm not a huge Funko Pop guy, but there are certain characters that I will buy and I just have no regrets. And of course... The man himself, the head of the family, if you will. The Trick or Treat Studios one-to-one -one scale replica Seed of Chucky, Chucky Doll. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I have a whole review on this on my channel back when it came out. And I got it in the mail and I could barely contain my excitement. And even right now, just looking at him, I can hardly contain myself. I'm not sure how he measures up to the one-to-one uh, -one scale NECA Bride of Chucky doll that is actually shipped, but I believe is available again right now for pre-order. Um, I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there. I'm sure someone has a comparison video. Um, I'm not sure. NECA does great products, but this is going to be hard to match with, so I'm not sure. Either way, this is the one I have, and I fucking love it. So coming down here, I got 
one of my all-time favorites. Y'all already know me. I got some Leprechaun action here. I got three Leprechaun Funko Pops. And funny enough, this is still, as of recording this in December of 2023, this is the only mass-produced Leprechaun figure ever made. Of course, there's customs, and there's like little promotional figures like this guy over here. But this is the only mass-produced ad that we have right now, so... I got all three variants, of course. I got the original, I got the Amazon exclusive, and I also have the FYE exclusive, all three of them. I fucking love them, pre-ordered them instantly the day they went up. Now this guy back here, he may not look like a whole lot if you are not familiar with this guy. He may not look like a lot to you, but this figure is super, super rare and something I've wanted in my collection for years. And this was a gift, a surprise from my mom, believe it or not. On my birthday, she got this for a great deal, and that is a promotional figure that was given out back when the movie was released in 93. Um, they had like a little questionnaire quiz, and you would answer it, and if you got the question right, they would give you one of these guys. It was a whole thing. Um, I've talked about it on the channel before in more detail, but that guy is all the way back to 93, which if you don't know, Leprechaun was actually filmed in 91, but released in 93, but that's neither here nor there. And then here, I found this thing on eBay. This is really cool. This is a limited piece. This was made by Serial Resin Company, and I just stumbled across it on eBay. Every so often, I type in horror leprechaun on eBay because I like to snatch up anything leprechaun that I can because I'm such a diehard fan. And he just doesn't get the love that the other slashers get, of course, in merchandise and action figures and whatnot. So this is, um, only 10 of these were made in gold. And it's signed by the artist here, Serial Resin Company, in 2017. So I got number 7 out of 10. And he only made a, a number of these, but in the gold, he only made 10. So I got number 7 of 10. So that's super cool. Um, I saw it and just bought it. I didn't even really ask questions. I just had to have it. So coming down here, another thing that I hold near and dear to myself is the Hannibal TV series. I have a replica missing poster for Freddie Lowndes. All six of the Funko Pops from the TV series, Jack Crawford, the Wendigo, both Will Grahams, and both Hannibal Lecters, including the Chase Blood Splatter variant from my cousin. Shout out to him. He's awesome. He got me that. And of course, I have my 1-6 scale Mass Mickelson portrayal of Hannibal Lecter. It's one of my favorite things in my whole collection. The detail is phenomenal. It's an awesome, awesome piece. I love it so much. And it's super, super, super hard to find. It went out of production a long time ago. They don't make these anymore, and I had to pay up to get this bad boy. But even so, I got a good deal on it, so I'm fucking honored to have it. And down here, we have some more custom-made stuff because there's a lot of really talented people in this horror community of ours. And this was made by Monster Man Studios. You can find him on Instagram. He makes all kinds of um, latex masks that you guys might be interested in for display or Halloween. Um, he makes, you know, Pennywise, uh, Ninja Turtles, Terminator, all stuff like that. But, of course, he makes my favorite Leprechaun uh, Warwick Davis style mask. This is the best leprechaun mask you're ever going to find. Not mass produced. Because um, there is one that is mass produced and it's absolutely horrible. This is a custom made one and it's absolutely phenomenal. And pulls off the likeness of the leprechaun so damn well. Coming up from there we got a couple things that are kind of hidden in the background here. We have a Spirit Halloween Krampus sign. Krampus is coming to town. Really nice signs, pretty pretty solid, you know, for 20, 25 bucks. You know, Spirit Halloween, I've been saying this for years now. They step up their game every year. Um, this is a really cool painting um, that I got of the Hannibal TV series. That was by an artist named Robert James Lubedke. Um, You can catch him. I um, hope he's doing well. I hope he's still around at cons, like at the Chicagoland area. Um, I actually, I think he travels all over the place, but he had the Hannibal print, and I was like, well, that's mine. I also got to meet Fiona Dorff at a convention. She was super cool. Of course, I got a picture with her. Minus the glare, I got a picture with her. And then I actually went back to her table a second time, and I got that autographed. And then below that, I know it's hard to see you guys. Let me see if I can get the phone back there. I have two Saw 3D... Hollywood premiere tickets with the COAs. Um, they're not exactly, you know, my prized possession, so they're kind of tucked away, but that's okay. They're still cool nonetheless. But 
Speaking of prized possessions, I do have a good handful of screen-used items in my collection that were used in film or television, and this is one of them. This is a complete screen-used wardrobe worn by Lawrence Fishburne in the season two finale of Hannibal the TV show. And down here, I got the certificate of authenticity. This, um, yeah, this is a this is the full wardrobe worn by Lawrence Fishburne, completely uh, dressed in stage blood. Because if you've ever seen the season two finale, it's bloody and it's beautiful. So I am beyond honored to own this piece. And the gentleman that sold me this, um, thank you. I fucking love you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And just above that, you see, you know, this is the background you see in all my videos. I have a Trick or Treat Studios 2018 Michael Myers mask. I have this custom made Krite figure that was made by, oh God, I don't remember. I have his picture underneath the Krite right here. I believe his name was Jason. He, he makes like, you know, props and special effects. He had made this Krite for me. And I found these two Krite eggs actually on Etsy. I was looking for some eggs to kind of go with the Krite, and I just typed in Critter Eggs, and these popped up on Etsy for like 10 bucks an egg or whatever. So I'm like, oh, those are kind of cool. So I went ahead and grabbed those to go with the Krite, and then next to that, I get a lot of compliments, a lot of comments on this guy here. Of course, it's Jack Frost, the mutant killer snowman. This is a full-size latex mask. But I'm, of course, I never use it as a mask. I use it as a, as a display piece. This was made by uh, DWN Productions. Fucking love that thing. The scarf I had bought separate. Um, I just tried to find a scarf that looked similar to his, and that was the best I could find. So I bought that and wrapped it around him. But it's definitely one of my favorite things in this room for sure. And then coming down from there, I have my Mogwise, the start of my NECA Gremlins collection. I got all of these guys. I'm just missing the gizmo. I mean, I have the ultimate gizmo, but I would still like the other gizmo. I have George, Lenny, Daffy, the 7-Up Mohawk Mogwai with Billy's daughter. Um, Mohawk, and then I believe this is Patches. Now, I know there's other ones that I need, like Penny and Duda, And I know Stripe has a Mogwai, so there's still a lot that I'm chasing, but these are the ones that I have currently. Of course, I have the gremlins cocoon egg and the little in scale gizmo with his car both of those came with the gremlins accessory set and then below that um if you're a longtime fan of the channel or maybe you you know found the channel and you've been catching up on old videos for a long time i was hunting the lost um i'm a big 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 fan of predator in general but definitely predator 2 has been one of my favorite predator movies and it's finally starting to get the respect now that it didn't get back in the day so i'm really happy about that but of course i have the entire lost tribe from the end of predator 2 i got them all here and i tried to make it screen accurate however their hands were whatever they were holding that's kind of what i did with them i got all of them right here on the top shelf fucking love them i think they're beautiful and just below them, I, of course, have the Jungle Hunter and the City Hunter, Predator 1 and 2. And just below that, um, I'm trying to get all the NECA Ultimate Predators. So this one, I've started my The Predator shelf. Um, unfortunately, um, it's looking a little little, little spry, but that's okay. I'll, I'll get them as I go, and I'm not a huge fan of that movie, The Predator. I thought it was atrocious, but, you know... You know, us collectors gotta have it even if we hate it. And these these two guys, unfortunately, were cut out of the film, so we don't even see them on screen. But regardless, if it's NECA and it's an ultimate predator, I'm gonna buy it. So yeah, I'm definitely collecting all of the ones that were in the movies or supposed to be in the movies. So coming up from the predator shelf, as you can see, this is the stuff that you see in the background of all my videos. Spirit Halloween, welcome to Camp Crystal Lake sign. Two awesome, awesome Jason masks made by a good friend of mine. He sent these to me. They're super cool, and they're always going to have a spot in my collection. Right below that, we have this awesome replica uh, gift from a friend of mine. Um, if you're a fan of Tremors, you know what this is. This is uh, the original Tremors Uzi for you. Burt Gummer's license plate on his Jeep. 
Right here, we got a Spirit Halloween sign. It's a Gremlin sign, of course, the three rules. Really like that. Saw that. It was like 10 bucks. I'm like, Psh, that's mine. And then right here, I got most of my Ultimate NECA Gremlin collection. Um, I'm getting real pissed off with these, and I was just talking to my wife before I started filming that I'm going to have to figure something out with these guys because we thought we had it solved where we had zip-tied them to spice racks, and it worked for a while, but as you can see, their top heaviness eventually just becomes a problem, and then they start doing this fucking bow shit, and it's just like, ugh, I cannot get these things to stand. You know, Brain is just completely covering up the flasher. So I'm getting kind of frustrated with them, but I still love them. So here they all are. You guys know what they are. No need to go through and name them all. You guys are aware. You know, the... Like these ones too, these guys just won't, they won't stand at all. They keep falling over. I had to lean Mr. Back to School guy there against the wall. So, you know, I, I NECA, I'll give you this. The Gremlins 2 new batch figures, the feet are much better and they stand a whole lot better. I, these guys, I don't think have ever fallen. The Tattoo Parlor ones or the Demolition Gremlins, I don't think they've ever fallen. So, hey, that's a plus and I'll take it. But still, it's a fucking pain in the ass. And then we're going to go on to the next shelf. Again, you see this in my videos. I got a NECA replica Ashy Slashy puppet, a plush Ash, an Evil Dead 2 Ultimate Ash, um, NECA Godzilla versus Kong, or Kong versus Godzilla, uh, some more King Kong Funko action, a little Mecha Godzilla there. I got the really cool sideshow, old school sideshow, Freddy and Jason back there, 1 6 scale, some more Funko Pops. Ultimate Freddy, Ultimate Retro Cloth, or Retro Cloth, New Nightmare Freddy. I got a Mezco uh, Creeper right there. Mezco 18 inch Pizza Face Chucky, 1 6 scale Decapitron from Full Moon Puppet Master. That's actually the stealth version as well. That's a that's a rare variant of him. And I also have a couple Toonie Terrors, Victor Crowley and Freddy Krueger along with the Blade out-of-the-box figure that, you know, he's from this same line, but he's just out of the box because the box was so badly damaged, I really couldn't salvage it, so I just took him out of the box. Once I get one in the box, I'll just give that one to my kids or something. And then right below that shelf, I have this alien skull. This is so cool, this xenomorph skull. My wife got this for me. It's made out of, I think, like a fiberglass material, and I've never really seen anything like it or never seen it ever in anyone else's horror room or horror collection. So I'm super proud to have that. Speaking of aliens, speaking of xenomorphs, that's what this detolf is. I got my aliens and my predators. That's kind of how I wanted to set it up. So I got a couple up here. I got the Prowler from Aliens Fireteam Elite. I got the Burster from Fireteam Elite. The Runner from Fireteam Elite. Down here we got the ugh, we got the prototype suit of the Xenomorph. And if you don't know, this was going to be the original color of the Xenomorphs. But when they were filming the movie, they were having trouble with the cameras and the lenses. And this color just wasn't, wasn't working right with the cameras and the reflections. So they ended up changing them to the dark brown, black, blue that we see in the film now. Of course, got some eggs, a couple face huggers. Two uh, chest bursters, one that just will not stand up. This is the Spitter from Alien Fireteam Elite the video game. And then down here we got a Warrior and we got Big Chap. And we also have the uh, <clears throat> Gender Potion for Greta that I still have not gotten out from behind the Detoff because I think that was there in my last video like four months ago. So <laughs> I, st I still have yet to get that out of there, but you know what? That's okay. And then let's go here to the left. On here to the left, we have the first person I ever met at a horror con was Kane Hodder. I'm a huge Jason X fan, so I asked him to autograph this for me. And I got the infamous Kane Hodder choke back when he actually used to choke people. Yes, I do realize that I look like an idiot. I can explain. I've explained this before. What had happened was I knew he was going to choke me. And I wanted to look scared for the picture, but when he actually, actually legitimately, I mean, look at his arm, when he actually legitimately choked me, it was a mixture of 
wanting to look scared, but actually like a holy shit what's happening, but I'm so happy that I'm getting choked by Jason. So you throw all that in a blender, and that's what my face is. What can I do? What can I do? This is an autographed limited edition. Um, see No Evil, if you're a pro wrestling fan, Kane, See No Evil is horror movie. Uh, this is 722 out of 1,000 made. COA on the back. I have this cloth hatchet Victor Crowley figure that I really wanted to open, but it's autographed by Adam Green, so I don't want to open it because I pre-ordered it from Aries Scope Direct when it was first announced. Another Walking Dead poster right there. And next to that, this is actually a screen-use piece, believe it or not. The Certificate of Authenticity is in the frame behind the picture. If you're familiar with the Hannibal TV show, Season 3, Hannibal draws this in his cell when he's captured. And um, I believe there's only two of these that exist, two or three, and I have one of them. And down here, uh, my family and I, when we went to go meet Kane Hodder, when my girls were still little, they're a little bit older now, and I'm wearing the awesome Rick Grimes murder jacket. That's right, if you're a Walking Dead fan. And right here, we talked about bucket lists in this video already. Let's talk about it again. Bucket list, I got to meet Brad Dorif, Chucky, the man himself. I got to meet him, and it was an absolute fucking honor. I was so fucking happy. And down here on the floor... Every single collector has this in their room. You have the pile of things that you haven't opened yet, you haven't displayed yet. This is so. This is mine. Um, I have the emissary predator number two. I believe this is the blue one because I got the purple one already on display. So hopefully he'll be up within the next few days. I have the Toonie Terrors box set for Saw. I have uh, this was an amazing gift from an amazing friend again from their personal collection this is the cloth um nun figure from NECA I actually had one of these and mine fell and had broke and I just casually mentioned it in a video and didn't really mean anything by it and a great friend of mine surprised me and sent this to me one day and it's like now it's one of my most prized possessions I just don't know where to put it so I got that this was another gift from a great 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 friend of mine He's like, hey, man, you know, you like Chucky more than I do at this point. Just go ahead and take it. And I just, I again, I'm torn. Do I open this? Do I not open this? This Chucky Tiffany Bride 2-pack is fucking phenomenal with some of the best accessories ever. Like, what the fuck, NECA? Yeah, if you know, you know. Love this 2-pack so much. Um, I also have the remnants of the Gremlins accessory pack. I haven't gotten around to getting any more Ultimate Gremlins to do Bandit Gremlin or the Aerobics Gremlin. Um, I got some stickers down here that was sent to me from a friend. Really cool stickers. Just not sure really where to put them. I got this really cool 11 by 17 Annabelle print I got at a Comic-Con. So I got that just kind of chilling down here. Again, guys, it's just, you know, you all know how it goes. It's just a pile of stuff that you haven't done anything with yet. You all know. I got the new batch. Um, this was an exclusive, I believe, a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Um, Ultimate Greta with the wedding dress on. Really love this figure. Again, do I open it? Do I not open it? I probably will. I'm an out-of-box collector. And then speaking of Greta, and she's always getting these fucking badass uh, Comic-Con exclusives, I got the showgirl as well, Greta. So she's really cool as well. I mean... What the fuck's going on there? I'm just saying, I don't know, man. There's some thirsty people out there. That's all I'm going to say about that. And I'm not one of them. All right. Then we also have this Ultimate NECA Trick or Treat Studios Sam doll. Again, a little small figure. Super cool. Um, definitely one of the coolest NECA figures. Solely for the fact that he actually has a light up pumpkin there. And it's really cool. Not sure where to put him or where to display him. So unfortunately, he's been kind of... Just um, hanging out in this pile of stuff that I have yet to display, along with some other really cool stuff I got here. My most recent convention, I got to meet David Howard Thornton, Art the Clown himself. Fucking really nice guy, had a great conversation with him. He's just such a down-to-earth, such a good human being, such a humble guy. So I got to meet Art the Clown, and I of course grabbed the, from Terrifier 2, I grabbed the clubbing. 
8x10 print that he autographed for me. Michael, let's go clubbing. Art the Clown. Love it. And then some of you have seen these in my previous videos. I took them down because I'm going to put them elsewhere. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Billy Boyd at a con. Um, unfortunately, did not get a picture with him because it was kind of during the COVID era and they didn't want to take pictures. So I wasn't able to get a picture with him, but I was able to talk with him. And he autographed both of these for me, a Glenn and a Glenda. And I'm really proud to have these in the collection as well. Big, big Chucky fan, big, big Glenn fan, Glenda fan, all that shit. So, as we round off the horror room tour here, you guys, we got what's in this display case and what's just above it. So, I have an autographed 8x10 when I met Kane Hodder for the second time. Um, I already had a Jason autographed picture, so I wanted to get a Victor Crowley one, so I got that signed by Kane Hodder. I have a plushy Michael Myers that was given to me. Um, speaking of DWN Productions that made the Jack Frost head, they also made the Little Killer Snowball as well. I'm not sure if he still makes these, if they still make these, but I saw it and it was an instant buy for me. Didn't even have to think twice. I love that thing so much. That's from the uh, part two, if you're aware. The previously mentioned uh, airplane, I gotta get some super glue. Oh, that's the Acme TMNT <clears throat> not TMNT, <laughs> TNT, excuse me, I was just thinking about Ninja Turtles. That's supposed to be up there. And we have this awesome plush King Kong that my kids got me. When I met Ken Hodder the first time, I got an autographed Jason mask from him. And then I have a full-size replica of the Lucille Negan, of course, Walking Dead baseball bat. The bloody version, gotta have it, gotta have it. This is a real machete, but it's been dulled down and covered in fake blood and guts. I got this for Christmas a long, long, long time ago. I'm talking like early, early, early teenager maybe, something like that. So when other kids were opening fucking Game Boys or whatever the fuck they were opening, I, uh, I was opening this bloody machete. So yeah, my parents were pretty fucking cool. And they still are. So we come over here. I have an autographed 8x10. From Doug Bradley, of course, Pinhead, Hellraiser franchise. Um, that one's really cool. I did not get to meet him or shake his hand or anything like that. He was doing a virtual convention is what he called it because it was during the height of COVID. So you got to message him a, a question and he would send you him on film answering your question and then send you the photograph that you ordered. He'd sign it right on camera for you. It was a really cool experience. And then right here I got a plush Krampus, of course, from one of my favorite horror Christmas movies, along with two of his little killer henchmen there, the Gingerbread Man and the Crazy Teddy. Pretty fucking sweet right there. So inside this case is, um, aside from this and, and that picture, I still have some other screen-used items in storage that I want to get back in to display, but everything in here is all screen-used pieces. So... Across the top here, as I've, as y'all know, I'm a huge Saw fan. So if you see the movies, you know when they're showing the victims and they were being stalked and they're going to be tested and whatnot, they show these pictures. So I got a few of the pictures here from some of the people that were being watched. These were you all used in the movies. And this one is my pride and joy because I'm a huge Hoffman fan. I'm a Hoffman maniac. This is a crime scene photo from Seth Baxter, of course, the guy that killed Hoffman's sister and this is the crime scene photo that they used in the pendulum room when he was murdered fucking awesome so glad to have that speaking of saw i got a couple more goodies down here i got a production used letter the amanda letter that hoffman wrote to amanda and then i have a little swatch of one of tiffany's dresses from the seat of chucky movie i also own a piece of the bloody tile from the most iconic bathroom in all of cinema that's right the fucking Saw bathroom. That's from Saw 7. I got a little bit of a piece of the tile. And then right here, this is from the season 3, well, as of right now, series finale, unfortunately. Hannibal TV show. This is the hatchet Hannibal used in killing Dollar Hyde. And then I got two Frisbees from Tremors 3. that were in the beginning of the movie. They were just used on set. There was a bunch of them. So they were kind of selling them for pretty cheap. So I got those. I have a swatch of the Pred Alien, or Chet, if you will, from AVPR. And then from Tremors 3, I also got the little Graboids keychain. 
And down here I have a set of a molding and an actual animatronic hand, both from Pinhead from the Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys movie. Those are from screen used um, movie props and wardrobe. Unfortunately, they're no longer around. They have been shut down for a few years now, but I was able to get these before that. And then, of course, one of my other prides and joys. I have a whole video about this. You can go check it out. This is a screen used severed hand from the leprechaun himself from leprechaun 4 in space mm -hmm. um like i said it's you know i got a whole video on this and it definitely shows its age but i got it well taken care of in a uv protected case and whatnot because i always take care of my stuff so if you're ever watching my videos and you're wondering what's in this case behind me that's what's in the case behind me and that everybody is a full look at my horror room my collection room, my pride and joy, my man cave, my fucking safe space, whatever you want to call it. This is the place where I love to be. This is where all the stuff that I love comes together. And it's just an amazing, amazing comfort space for me. This is my pride, my joy, my passion. And I love sharing it with each and every one of you. So thank you all so, so very much. But of course I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching another one of my videos. It really truly does mean a lot to me. I hope each and every one of you know that. But if you are interested in a more personal look at my life of horror, you can follow me on Instagram right there. You can also join our Facebook community group. All the information for that is in the description box down below. So with all that being said, I want to say thank you one more time. Remind you that my name is Mike and this is my design.